it's Bear O'Clock and this is the Bear O'Clock Show. My name's Mark and joining me this week, as always, the fruity to my tootie is my beer buddy Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, mate. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good. We've got two very, very special beers this week and joining us is a very special little boy, the man behind the creation of this week's beers. The brewer extraordinaire, Mr. Andy Parker. Hello, Andy. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Steve. Good, good to be evening. here. Nice to have you back. Yeah, good to be back. <laughs> For the third time, has to be said, you're now tied even with duty. <laughs> One more. <Excellent. laughs> One more and you get a badge. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, that's um, completely my, my hat trick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the beers this week... Uh, One's called Tutti, one's called Fruity. They're an American Pale Ale and a Saison, brewed by Andy. Um, initially, to my request, I wanted, as long-term, long-time listeners of the show will know, I've been wanting a Tutti Fruity Saison for no reason other than I loved saying Tutti Fruity Saison. And Andy took up the challenge. Then Steve stuck his oar in and demanded that he actually get a beer out of it that he finds drinkable. So, Andy very kindly agreed to brew two beers, Tutti and Fruity, on different styles. But we'll get to the even more story behind that when we actually get to the beers. Steve, is there anything that you want to talk about before we get into the news, mate? Um, no, 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 no not right. I want to know what beers I've been drinking this week, otherwise, oh, no. Actually, yeah, let's talk about that. I don't have, I do have my phone with me. <laughs> What beers have you been okay. drinking this week, Steve? <laughs> uh, okay, well, seamlessly done. Um, just just a couple that I wanted to mention. Um, I went along to the first Essex Bottle Share event last week, um, which, uh, full disclosure, I've had a hand in helping to organise these events. Um, but it was our first event last week. We had a good turnout. There's eight people turned up, and there was a great range of beers. And, and just one of the beers I wanted to mention from that, which was an absolute winner of the evening, um, hands down around the table, uh, supplied by a friend of the show, Justin Mason, um, Stone's Imperial Stout, but this was from 2009, so he's been aging this beast for six years, and it was just amazing. It was just smooth as velvet and big chocolatey coffee aromas, lovely beer. Um, it's the second time I've had one of their Imperial Stouts now. I had one on the Crimbo Crawl as well, but they're, they're really, really nice beers. So that was one that I wanted to mention. And just the other one that I wanted to mention as well, I made a trip all the way down to your neck of the woods, Mark, um, down to South London to, to visit <laughs> Hot Burns and Black, um, mm -hmm. purely because they had Cannonball New Zealand on their um, growler field. So I went all the way down there and got myself a great big litre's worth of Cannonball New Zealand, and boy, was it worth the trip. Um, firstly, just because the shop is awesome, and Jen and Glenn, the guys that own it, are so nice, and they're so friendly, and they're so willing to chat to people. Um, but they've got a great selection of ears in there, and now they've obviously got this added element of the, the, the growler as, as well, or the flagon, as they call it. But yes, I did come home with a, with a litre's worth of Cannonball New Zealand, which I merrily drank to, all to myself uh, one <laughs> evening last week. Um, and it's merrily bit as good. You were there, Steve, a litre of Cannonball. <laughs> yeah, I was more, I was in my element, mate. I tell you, I, I just I couldn't, what's the word? Pigging shit, I think it is. Um, <laughs> that's how happy I was last week. Um, but yeah, they, they were my two standouts of, of the week. Um, Mark, what about yourself, mate? Um, I've only had a handful of beers in the last, um, well, since we last spoke. But the standout for me, and I mentioned this on Twitter, that my beer of the week was Indigo Child by the Wild Beer Company. Which is, when I taste it, I think, oh, this is quite saison -y, but that's just the sourness in it. And, oh, gorgeous. I, I could drink that all night, despite it being 8%. But it's just yeah, it's just really sweet that one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just lovely. How about you, Mister Park? What have you been drinking lately, mate? Uh so um, I went to a summer wine tap takeover at Brewdog. Um, so I tried uh, tried some of their beers, some some of their barrel aged beers, um, stuff they they kind of uh, tucked away for a while. Uh, they also had a, a the new black IPA on Davy Jones Locker. That was pretty decent. A really Really quite bitter for a back IPA, uh, but um, I, I did enjoy that. Um, 
yeah, I think uh, yeah, that was that was really good. Also, Weird Beard had a um, bit of a shindig uh, at the bottle shop on Saturday, uh, where they relaunched the little things that kill after the, the problems they had with with previous brews over carbonating and so on. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed that too. Cool. Did did they have their? Did you manage to get your hands on their new cans? On, I did. On I was, I was, as well. Yeah, uh, Brian. Brian had to. A pocket full of them on uh, on Friday, and I managed to prize one out of his out of his hands. So yeah, I've got one in the fridge. Yeah, uh, what, what they can? They've all gone, haven't they? <laughs> they've sold them out. Yeah, they, they can the the Citra Pilsner, uh, f- a faceless spreadsheet ninja. <laughs> I love their names. But this cool. this was on a this was on a mobile canning plant wasn't it that, that that went to the brewery they've not they've not installed a line they're using the mobile canning option aren't they exactly yeah so the um they had the, the beer kind of ready to go um had been had been sort of conditioned and carbonated and then basically were a uh, mobile canning line rocked up and they set up in the brewery um and canned directly from the from the conditioning tank so yeah it was a but maybe we'll see a trend in that i mean it canning seems to be a, a good way to 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 sell your beer and um you know there's definitely a lot of appetite for them Good flavours and beers in cans, so maybe uh, maybe something we'll see a bit of a trend in this year is is you know my world canning uh, picking up and, and more breweries doing it. Well, it, it's it seemed to work for Weird Beer because I mean they announced on Twitter today that that entire first batch is now gone. It's it's already gone out for orders. So um, if anybody wants any more, they're going to have to wait at least another month until the mobile canning rocks up again. So good for them, <laughs> uh, I think. Yeah. It's, an, it's, it's another like... way to get their beers to market. Like a mobile library, is it? You got to wait for it to swing around again to get your go. <laughs> oh, I, the, I, the, I the, maybe it's the ice cream van. You got to flag it down and run outside. You, <laughs> you can hear the music. <laughs> cannery, cannery, cannery. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What music would that play? How cool would that be? That would just be so good. Uh, something very drunken sounding, probably. Anyway, Stephen, do you have some news for us, mate? There's, there's always news, mate. Do you want your pips? I know Andy wants the pips. Give us the pips. And he wants the, and he wants the pips. <laughs> Do the pips. Beep, 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 News. Okay, first up this week's news. Uh, there's another another Weatherspoon Beer Festival on its way, uh, running between 13th and 29th of March. Um, it's going to be 10 overseas breweries, 50 beers, and 22 different hop varieties, which will feature in the festival. Um, now, the twist on it is most of the beers have been brewed with... Um, only using British grown hops, so classics such as Fuggles and Goldings to newer var- varieties like Jester. Um, and all of the beers have been brewed at breweries in the UK. So, for more information about that, I would say visit Weatherspoon's website and have a look and see which beers are being brewed. In other um, beer festival news, Craft Beer Rising is next week at the Truman's Brewery in London. We, uh, the old Truman Brewery in London, um, don't rock up to the new one in Hackney Wick because there won't be a festival there. Go to the old <laughs> Truman's Brewery in, in London. Um, we've, we've mentioned this a couple of times now. The, the full beer list has been published and is available on the website if you want to have a look. I've had a quick flick through. There's a few highlights in there that, that I'm looking forward to, particularly at the Adnam stand. They're rolling out barrel-aged broadside, which is, which is a beer I've only heard rumours about. In, in the past, but this is um, obviously bullside that's been aged in, I think it's been aged in some of the whiskey casks that Adnams have been producing down there. Um, Beaver Town have got uh, a few interesting things on that are worth a look. Holy Cow, Bell India Stout, Heavy Water, Imperial Stout with Sea Salt and Cherries will be on. Um, Camden Town have got some interesting ones on. They've got um, IHL was going to be on, which I think will be a rare keg of it. Um, and also the beer 2014, the the Bourbon Barrel Aged Bock Lager, and a barrel aged version of IHL as well is going to be on uh, at Craft Beer Rising. So that'll be interesting. See how that works. There's some beers on from Franciscan Well, who are based in Ireland. So keeping in line with this season's theme, it might be worth having a look at those. Um, and loads of others. All many, almost too many to mention. Um, Interestingly, Thornbridge have, have put on that Jaipur X 
will be on as well. So whether that's keg or cask, who knows? But um, I've not yet had a taste, but it might be worth a little look. So that's Craft Beer Rising. Again, check out their website. I've not got it written down, but it's probably something like craftbeerrising.co.uk. And then to finish this week's news on, um, and this will be one that's, that's close to Andy's heart as well. Um, this year's National Home Brewing Champion was announced last week. So, so this was the competition that, that Andy won last year with the Craft Brew Company. Um, this year won by Gareth Young from Glasgow, who brewed a 5.6% Saison. Um, and much the same as Andy did last year, he'll now, now go on to brew that beer with Dark Star, and he walked away with a £5,000 cash prize. Now, Andy, I think you was actually at that event, weren't you, pouring the beer that won it last year? Yeah, I was. We, we, uh, it, for whatever reason, it took us a long time to get around to brewing it, so in the end, it made sense just to hang on and, and, and have it uh, launch at, the, at this year's prize giving, so that's what we did. We, we brewed it um, about, oh, first week of the new year, uh, that, that first week at work sort of thing and then uh, yeah it, it, it first poured at the prize giving of this year so uh, yeah the, the beer that won was um, it was actually actually all of the uh, the beers that made it to the final were, were fabulous but uh, this one was uh, yeah it was very very good it, it's uh, um, had lots of bread in it uh, it'd been aged with some uh, dregs of all bow bottles and things like that so uh, it's going to be a fun little project for the guys at Dark Star to, uh, to crack on with and uh yeah, I do look forward to tasting it when it's uh, when it surfaces. But very, were, were, very you, were you on the judging panel this year? As, as yeah, I was, well, I was one of six one of six judges. Um, so we had guys from Dark Star, we had Pete Brown, uh, Magic Rock Rich, uh, Tom Cadden. Uh, we had Jen from Beaver Town, the head brewer at Beaver Town. Um, so yeah, it was uh, I was one of six, and uh, it was a uh, uh, we had a lot of beers to uh, to get through in that day. We kind of split it split in half and. Uh, Came to, came up with our collective favourites in terms of the ones that have got the highest scores, and then all the judges tasted the favourites and agreed on the winner. And and how did your beer turn out, mate? Did it was was it every bit as as good as you you, you hoped it would it, be? Yeah, I mean I've got to give credit to the, the guys at Dark Star because they took my recipe and, and I had a bit of fun trying to scale it up myself. But of course, you never know the sort of utilisation you're going to get from the hops uh, that is the amount of bitterness that gets extracted because uh, bigger kits generally better. Uh, things like the efficiency of the mash, the amount of sugars you manage to get from your grains is always better on the commercial kit. Um, so yeah, they, they actually did a little pilot brew in December. Um, I got a little 100 litre pilot kit, so they tested it there um, to figure out the attenuation and uh, and that sort of thing. And then uh, yeah, scale it up and, and uh, brewed well, 8,000 litres of it, so it was a huge old brew. Um, and I had, I had fun down there, yeah. But the beer, the beer itself is, uh, yeah. You know, I wish I had still had a bottle of the homebrew version to to compare because I think it's a pretty faithful replica, and I was really pleased with it when I tasted it. Cool. Any other news, buddy? Or was that it? No, no, that was it. That was that was the, my news. My news was finished there. Um, I just just thought it'd be nice to get Andy's views on on this year's competition and um, to to see how he found the, the the judging process. Cool. Shall we get on to this week's beers then? Yes, let's. Yeah, yeah, let's. let's. Right, so as I said, we have two beers. We have an American Pale Ale and a Saison. The Pale Ale is 5.6%. Saison is 6.4. Pale Ale is called Tutti. The Saison is called Fruity. Now, Andy, I think I asked you to brew a Tutti Fruity Saison the last time you were on, or did I challenge yes. you on Twitter? I think uh, there was a, it's both. I think Mark, it's been a it's been a campaign. Let's, let's, let's... <laughs> Let, I've been reminding you gently every couple of months, mainly because I just start shouting at you on Twitter, Tutti Fruity. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I but... finally got round to it. So these were brewed just before Christmas. Uh, both of the both of the beers brewed together. They're the same beer in a way. Right, and Steve tackled you at Indie Man last year, and kind of demanded a, a slice of this. So that's where the American Pale Ale comes in. Um, now, from yeah. my understanding, it's the same base recipe as far as hops and malt go, but the Saison has a Saison yeast. Yeah, right. so what I did uh, was, they're actually, they are, they're the same beer, and it was the same, you know, I only did one brew, but what I did was split it into two different fermenters. So um, yeah, it's an interesting little project because the uh, the, the tutti frutti, the fruits 
uh, we we you know I want, wanted in the, in the kettle because obviously they want to be common to both beers. So I kind of mashed the beer in and then uh, started boiling it. And it's an interesting split because saisons are very low bitterness. Um, and uh, obviously APA, uh, American Pale Ale, you want a bit of bitterness. So I didn't put any hops in the kettle at all. So there was no no hops. It was all fruit. And I used kiwi, papaya, and mango. Uh, and then uh, I split them into – and I did do, use some uh, flame-out hops for aroma and flavor. That was motueka, which gives like a lime thing, I think. Uh, and yeah, and then, then the fun started, which was trying to turn – that kind of common word into two different beers. So um, from that point, uh, I split them into two fermenters and used two different yeasts. Uh, I used the the USO5, the, the kind of American ale yeast for the APA, and used the French Saison yeast for the Saison. Now, the, the Saison yeast attenuates much better, so it can get more alcohol from uh, from the same wort. So you... You know that's why saisons generally you associate with being dry. It's because they finish uh, at a lower gravity, so the less the less sweet, if you like, the less residual sugars in the finished beer. Uh, and then yeah, I set about some crazy dry hop stuff. Do you want to hear about that too, or do you want? Should we get? Yes, I want to hear about it all. Okay. <laughs> so um, the so the the challenge was that basically uh, the pale ale at this point had a very low bitterness, so uh, the pale ale was double dry hot. Um, so I use Vic Secret. Uh, this that's an Australian hop. Um, very very fruity hop again. Trying to trying to stay on the on the fruity side of things. Um, but even then, I tasted it and I thought, well, it's not quite bitter enough. It was still n- not an not an APA. So I added uh, my old favourite Nelson Sauvignon, which is another fruity hop uh, that has kind of a gooseberry white wine character. Um, so those were those were the dry hops that went into the APA on on the saison. Um, I used uh, TNT, um, which I think is a German hop, if I'm right. Um, again, very fruity. Uh, you get a lot of berry kind of flavors from it, strawberries and things like that. Uh, but the um, that's a lower alpha, so uh, it wasn't going to introduce as much bitterness to the saison. So it'd be interesting to see compare the bitterness between the two beers um, when when we get them open. Uh, but yeah, they're uh, they're two different beers from the same kind of Daddy. <laughs> Just as a complete aside, that first hop you mentioned, the Motueko, Motueka, Motueka. Yeah. Um, is that a relatively new hop? Because I, I see, I've been seeing, well, mainly Colonel seem to have been going mad for it in the last couple of months. I've seen two different yeah, it's, of it's have... one of the, the so-called New World uh, New Zealand hops. Um, so it's a it's a New Zealand hop. Motueka is actually a place. Um, no, because I went there and it was awesome. Uh, but I didn't find any hops like on the floor or anything. But um, <laughs> they don't grow on trees there. But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's just in the north of the South Island, not far from Nelson actually. Um, okay. And these, these are varieties that are kind of named after the places where they're grown, and they kind of pick up um, a lot of the characteristics that you get in. There's a lot of great wine grapes grown in that same region, like the Marlborough mm-hmm. region, in the north of the South Island in New Zealand, and uh, these hops are picking up. Uh, some of those same, uh, you know, I guess it's down to the soil, but um, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of uh, picking up some of those great notes, which is interesting. Cool. Okay. Well, let's stop talking and, and let's start drinking. Yes. So which one are we going? We're going for the Saison first. Yeah, that's the silver cap. So, yeah, let's get that one okay. open. Cool. <laughs> can't wait. This has been a, a long time. I, I've poured mine while you two are chatting, um, so I'm I'm very excited about this because I've been getting a good whiff of the pair of them, and and they both are oh. smelling really really good. The, the saison's almost got there's there's a bit of a on the aroma there's a there's a thick syrupiness to the aroma which which is is coming across really nicely, and um, you can almost smell the bitterness on on the APA. Um, so this is going to be an interesting uh, oh. test, I think, of, of these two beers. Is this the first time you've done anything like this, Andy, or, or have you tried these sorts of things before? Uh, no, I think it's the I've, – I've split beers at the dry hop stage before and dry hopped them with different hops, but in terms of trying to produce two separate beers from one work, that's the first time I've, I've done that, yeah. Um, so it's a fun project. 
we're pretty groundbreaking on the on the beer o'clock show. Well, you you inspired these uh, these beers, so uh, <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh... That's got a lovely, lovely nose on it. Saison. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too um, it's not too saisony, which which is a good thing. And to be fair, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm quite um optimistic about this because I've, I've tried both of Andy's previous commercially available saisons, and I've I've really enjoyed them both. So um, hopefully this will this will make another hat trick tonight. Well, let's get into it, buddy. All right then. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Very dry. Yeah. It's, um, it's, yeah. It's the it's really it's the, dry. The French saison yeast is a complete beast. Um, uh, yeah, it, it generally will will dry a beer right out um, if if you leave it. It can go down to kind of o two o four sort of gravity. I think it's finished at around o four. So yeah, it's uh, it's very dry. It tends to be very dry, but it's um. Interestingly, I think it's it's quite bitter. I think mm. the dry hopping um, has added more than I thought it would to it. it is, I don't know what you guys think, but I'm getting quite a, quite a, a sturdy bitterness from it for a saison. It's quite earthy for a saison as well. Mm. So I'm not getting yeah, as much. It's got a very a very lasting bitter finish to to it. Um, it it's kind of a long a long dry. Bitter finish, and, and I agree with what Mark says there as well. It is it is quite quite earthy for a saison, yeah. as, as well. So I'm not getting um, as much sweetness from it as I expected to from the aroma. Yeah, I think it's just again that the you know that dryness just just powers through at the end, along with the you know the bitterness around the tongue. So there maybe the the fruit. Uh, the kind of fruity aroma doesn't quite carry through to the flavour, or at least the bitterness kills it, or you know, kind of takes over from it. Um, mm. If you can't leave it in your mouth, it's. Uh... I, th- I think you pick up a little bit of the the, the fruit flavours on on the carbonation because it is. I mean, it's it's amazingly carbonated. It's really fizzy, um, and some of those flavours are coming through on those bubbles. Um, but then it is kind of it's taken away by the dryness and the bitterness at the at the end of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree. I mean, the the fruits were kiwi, papaya, and mango, and I think um, I don't I don't know if I can pick any of those out individually. Maybe on the aroma, interestingly, maybe some papaya there. But it's um, I think when we get onto the APA, um, some of those uh, flavors and aromas are more prominent from the fruit. Yeah, you get that straight away on the on on the nose of the APA. You, the the, the flavours, those fruit aromas are coming through. And have you poured your APA I mean, out already, Steve? I have. Yeah, I, I poured them both at the same time um, to to let them sit for a bit. Um, I mean, it's it's yeah. There's the, the, the APA has got very little carb in it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a shame. I mean, it was. Um... It was left out. Uh, I wanted to. It was quite because it was dry hopped at a very high amount to try and get the bitterness up as well. It um, it was very, very uh, a bit London murky, I must admit. And uh, I let it cold crash uh, for probably way too long. You notice it's really clear, uh, and it, I think I just dropped all the yeast out. So when it came to uh, prime, I'm not a prime from the bottle, but when it came to priming, um, the yeast wasn't there to. To kind of uh, carbonate the beer, so yeah, I'll hold my hands up and say, well, I got that one a bit wrong. What you, what you normally do as a home brewer in that case is you can uh, you reprime them with fresh yeast. Uh, some brewers use um, like champagne yeast, which is will pretty much eat anything. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it's unfortunate, really. It's a, a technical error on my part. So I, ha- I hold my hands up. That's why it's uh, not particularly well carbonated. What do you think of the aroma? I think this is much more. Um, much more what I'd expect from what went into it on your aroma. On the pail? Yeah. Yeah, you're getting those sweet fruits straight away off that. Yeah, I, I'll yeah. tell you what. Um, for, for, for me, Andy, this is um, the aroma is just reminds me, and it's, it's, it, it reminds me so strong because it's an aroma that just sticks in my mind. And, and this is probably going to surprise nobody about what I'm about to say here. But the aroma is very reminiscent of, of last year's Unhuman Cannonball. 
release. It's it's very very similar to that. You can you, you can smell the, the the bitterness on the aroma. You can smell the flavours of the fruit. Um, it's um, it's very inviting that that aroma. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying that one actually. But, See, I'm not getting any bitterness the... on the aroma, Steve. I. I am. It's it's there in the background, but it's it. I mean, the fruit flavors are there. The fruit flavors mm. are more there than they were in the saison. Yeah. Let's have a little sip of the pale, then, shall we? That's yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Cheers again, guys. Cheers. Now that's Ooh, lovely. Oh, that's like drinking tropical juice. <laughs> yeah. If that was yeah. if that was more carbonated, it would be spot on. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a shame I couldn't uh, offer you a carbonated one, but the, actually, I will. I, I will. I can reprime and uh, and I, I can. Uh, I will get a carbonated one to you. But I think I think you're right, Steve. It's got more of that uh, more of that fruit. The kiwi papaya mango comes through, but um, I also get like a, a big hit of lime. I don't know about you guys, but mm, right at the uh, end, that zestiness there. Yeah. Um, May come it's, from the... it's refreshing as well. That that hit of lime at the end, mm. it's just really refreshing. It really f- refreshes the palate, and it makes you want to go back in for more. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting that really easy kiwi fruit right up front, and then it settles into a, a gentle bitterness at the back with that fresh lime coming coming through. Yeah, although I'd say of the two, um, the saison is more. Maybe it's more bitter for me. I don't know. Go back to the saison and try it. Yeah, it could, it could just be the the dryness, but I think the saison just feels a bit more, you know, leaves a bit more on the, on the finish, the bitterness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the saison's got a massive bitter finish to it, whereas the the, the APA is just so easy. Um, mm. That that APA, you could just guzzle that, and and yeah. you'd probably lose a few hours before you knew where you were. <laughs> Actually, I think on that one. <laughs> yeah, I think the APA is something I'd love to brew um, uh, more of, and, and uh, you know, it might be a chance to revisit the saison as well. But when I when I first kind of cracked one of these, um, and I shared one round on on Friday actually, because uh, it's not the guys from Summer Wine were there, and um, this beer as it is 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 uh, kind of not far a million miles away from the Mount Akea in terms of what they did with the tropical fruit and the uh, the kind of kiwi hop, so. Um, yeah, interested to, to hear what they thought, but uh, yeah, I think um, as I'm just I'm a bit annoyed it's not more carbonated. But there you go. Well, I think I think you've 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 got a potential solution for that, haven't you tonight? That something you want us to try with these beers? Yeah, well, you know, let's let's take some of the fizz from the saison and some of that bitterness, and <laughs> let's do a craft blend. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, almost live on air then. A little bit of Vunk and craft. Um, what what sort of um, percentages do you think, Andy? Uh, I've, I've just gone. I've gone kind of fifty-fifty-ish initially. So okay, let's 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 give that a go then. So I, I, I'm, what I'm hoping is we'll get some of the bitterness and the carbonation from the saison, but retain the the fruitiness from the and the aroma from the pale ale. So what do you reckon? I I I, I think we've actually got. The tutti frutti now in 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 this beer, um, not wanting to sound obvious or or anything like that, but it it has it's 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 brought the the, the fruit flavours from the the APA. Um, oh yeah. It's put those into the fizz of the saison, and the, the the two have combined to to put through a much more subtle bitter finish to it. Yeah. And it's it it is actually it's it's it's, it's not one of those. Transformer things where it comes together and it makes the bigger monster <laughs> type thing. It's um, it, it is it does work really well actually. The, the, the two of them work together. Yeah, on the aroma side, you're getting those sweet fruits cutting through the saisony aromas, and you know, aroma wise, this makes sense now when you after we've combined them. Let me have a taste. Yeah, and again, you're getting that faint saisony. With the lovely fruits, not as saisony as Steve may fear from a saison, but it's like a a fruity bitter pale with that little saisony sour hint to it. 
Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the um, it, it's maybe toned down the fruitiness a bit, but it's also countered the the kind of high bitterness in the saison. And uh, yeah, I, I think it works actually. It's um, it's uh, maybe a case of the the you know the sum being bigger than the, the two parts or whatever that saying is. But uh, yeah. yeah, it does work pretty well. And also, it also covers up my uh, my crap um, bottle priming and uh, it's got a bit of fist. <laughs> I think it was, it's interesting what you said there, Mark, actually, about the, my, my fear of the stays on, because um, it, that's obviously been widely documented. But when, when we poured this, I didn't get that 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 kind of funk that you get from mm. a lot of saisons that instantly puts me off. What, yeah. what I got from it was, was more of the effervescence and, and the, the, the aroma that you get from more of, like I, I suppose, probably like a classic-style saison, something like DuPont. Something like that, which is mm-hmm. you don't get the funk from that. What you get is the fizz and the flavour. And yeah. um, I'm not sure where you were were pitching this, Andy. Whether you were going more more classical in its styling or more modern in terms of let's throw everything in the kitchen sink in it to give it the biggest funk that we can. But for, for me, the the the, the saison on its own wasn't too saisony, and I was quite enjoying it. Um, but you put the the APA into it with with, with all the tropical juices and flavours that come with it, and I, I do think we have pretty much the the, the perfect beer with the, the two of them blended together. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it as a as a blend. It's uh, yeah, I think it's it's worked out pretty well. Who'd have thought blend? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it's, we can call it tutti frutti. It, it, it's kind of a saison pale ale hybrid. Um, yeah. There you go. And you can try it <laughs> separately, or you can try it together. There, there you have yeah. it. <laughs> um, Andy, wanted you to tell us a little bit what you've been up to, um, elusive brew wise. Elusive brew, elusive brewing. Is it elusive brew? Or Elu- elusive yeah, elusive brewing. brewing. Uh, I, it's elusive brew on Twitter because somebody already got elusive brewing, but it's a dead account. <laughs> it's really annoying. All I right. should maybe tweet them and, and see if they'll give it to me. But um, yeah, the uh, yeah, Lucid Brewing. It's been it's been interesting. So um, I've been through. It's been a bit of a saga trying to get um, fully up and running. Um, so I've been through like three different premises that um, you know, two two of which didn't work out. The third one um, in Farnborough in Hampshire. I'm really happy with. It's a a former dray yard for Simmons Brewery. Simmons Brewery was a a kind of big family-owned brewery that was based in Reading, um, and uh, the train line from Reading um, goes to Farnborough North and goes through Farnborough North to Guildford. And they had a dray yard there for where they used to distribute to all their local pubs in Farnborough, and uh, that has since been, um, you know, Courage bought them in um, I think the the seventies, and uh, they took the main brewery on in Reading, became the, the kind of Courage brewery there. But that's since shut down as well. Um, and the, these buildings are, are there. They're beautiful, beautiful building built in the 1700s, and um, it's a it's a nice. It's got a nice symmetry to it for me. My my uh, my uncle's granddad was a brewer at Simmons as well. Um, so there's a bit of a, a, albeit a bit tenuous, but a family connection to the brewery too, which is nice. And uh, I'm pretty excited about the um, finally getting my hands on these premises and uh, getting this up and running. So we've got. Um, I'm kind of it, it, there's a lot of things you need to go through setting up a brewery, um, not least things like you know checking with the council on the planning front, um, water board, electric, you know all the utilities. And at the minute, I'm uh, I'm kind of at the final hurdle. I hope, which is the um, approval from the water board for a um, a permit to to use the drains for trade waste. There's, you know, brewing producers uh, some uh, effluent that you need to dispose of, and I uh, want to make sure I'm. Not going to upset the water board because they they can find you if they want. Um, <laughs> and one, once we're there, I mean the kit, the kit. I'm ready to. We've agreed on terms for the lease. The the landlord is currently preparing the building. He's kind of splitting it into different industrial units. Having it used to be a, a blinds factory, and he's retiring, um, and they're shrinking the factory down, um, and it's freeing up a lot of space in this former uh, dray yard uh, building. Uh, yeah, the kit is my kit. I've got a five barrel kit on order that I've had to push back with the premises, but um, that's due um, in the middle of March. Um, so that's going to come around quite quickly. So um, yeah, the um, 
will be hopefully, uh, if all's well with the, the various permits and licenses, be uh, doing a build out kind of mid March to probably mid April, and after that, I'll have my own kit to play on, which is really exciting. <laughs> and is it, is it full time that you're going, Andy? Are you going into literally leaving the day job and becoming a full time brewer? I don't know. Maybe my manager will listen to this, so I'll, I'll, I'll say um, <laughs> well, I'm fully committed to my job. Okay, you, can t- you can tell us off air after. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, no, I think um, initially we part time. It's quite timely because my um, my dad is is retiring in March, and he's one of these people that can't uh, can't sit still. Uh, he's very practical. He's a he's a mechanical engineer, quality en- engineer by trade, and he's kind of chomping at the bit to help out with this. So. Um, you know, between us, um, we'll hopefully be able to get things going, and uh, I'd like to get the first few brews in, see how it goes, see how those sell, hopefully people will want to buy this stuff, and uh, from there, you know, see how the business takes off. Um, but, you know, it has potential that towards the end of the year I might consider my my future career and and, uh, and, and take the plunge. And, and what, what formats are you going to be putting the beer out in? Yeah, good question. So uh, one thing I've learned from speaking to a lot of brewers, um, small breweries that have started up, is that you, you need a beer that you can sell a good amount of volume of locally. Um, because if you think about, you know, doing small batches, I mean, a, a 800 litre batches, that's 17, 18 casks, um, maybe 25 key kegs if you go down that route per batch. So um, you know, if you're doing car scales, um, you want to get the, the empties back quickly. Uh, so doing that locally and it is better um, in terms of your cycle on them. So I'm going to be doing a split of. Um, I won't be bottling initially. Uh, I might do some hand bottling, um, but the main format is going to be cask and um, some sort of one-way keg. I'm still assessing whether that'll be key keg or dolium or you know e keg or whatever. But um, in all likelihood, it'll be it'll be it'll be key keg. Um, for sending beers further afield, so the cask beer will be locally and into London, um, and the the keg beer will be further afield. Um, unless uh, you know, I might send some casks further afield, but as long as I can hopefully get the the empties back quickly, and so I can use them again. Cool. So, do you think we will be seeing um, your own commercial brew by Christmas? Yeah. Well, I, I hope to. Um, the, the first beers. Um, I hope to have in, uh, you know, kind of early summer. Um, okay. If we're up and running, you know, mid-April, uh, that might be a stretch, but let's say the end of April. Um, then, you know, end of May is reasonable for, for getting beer out there. So, yeah, I need to decide uh, on my first kind of recipes and look at what hops I can get. I've got some stashed away in a freezer in the garage, but um, we'll uh, we'll see what we can come up with in terms of the, well, the initial beer. If you need any ideas, mate, just you know, drop me a message and I'll, I'll come up with something. <laughs> so, you, were you wanting commission, Mark, on the recipes, or uh, <laughs> your mates? Will you let Will you let the first one go? <laughs> uh, I'll give you a credit, and you know, for the first year or so, and we'll see how you go. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you what, mate. If you can get if you can get your first brew, if you can get a couple of a couple of bottles of your first brew as well, we'll we'll have you back on for your fourth appearance and and, and feature your first ever commercial brew. I'd That's love to absolutely. do that. Yeah, and as I said, I will be doing some some kind of hand bottling. Um, so there'll be some small small scale bottling of those first batches. So yeah, I'd be happy to uh, get them up to you and uh, yeah, come back on. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah it'd be love, nice to come that. out and. It'd be nice to come out and check out your operation once you're all set up and things are going smoothly. You're always welcome. We're right by the train station too. It's literally oh, 20 yards from the station, so I'm hoping it will get a bit of footfall in the future if we want to kind of sell beer out the front door. Um, a little tap or something would be would be awesome. In, in the meantime, uh, I've been um, doing some collabs and, and uh, looking to get a little bit, of, little bit of beer out there with other breweries who've been kind enough to accommodate me and uh, did one recently with Siren um, called Dinner for One uh, that I believe you tasted Steve last week um, yes yep. so uh, yeah that, that's one um, that was a a pale ale with mostly Vienna malt um, with some German hops some interesting uh, newish German hops and uh, Siren were pretty pleased with that and they sold uh, sold pretty well so they're doing a dinner for two 
um, which is a um, is going to be the same malt, same base recipe, but with different hops. So that's that's pretty exciting, and yeah, very grateful for to Saren for uh, for inviting me down to do a brew. Cool, and you did one with Hogsback last year, didn't you? I did, yeah, I did one with Hogsback. Um, that was a, a special for GBBF. Yeah, that's where Steve and I had it, yeah. An amber ale um, with mm. some red centennial. Um, yeah, so that was, uh, that was a fun project as well. Um, yeah, I think that was, was our, that was our first beer once we were in the door at GBBF. We just oh, see, went I'm, straight I'm, to Hogsback. It. It, uh, it was an interesting beer. It, it was... Uh, um, it was great to having a bit having a beer at GBBF. I mean, we're going to the GBBF for years and years, and that was a bit of a surreal moment pulling a pint of my own beer uh, there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Is that the one that um, one of the princes had? I know he was at the Hogs. Bank. Yeah, the, I I wasn't there, but um, Harry was pretty he? pretty funny story because the um, Prince Harry was there, and he was a little bit kind of covert. Um, <laughs> apparently the the, the the upper deck of GBBF was uh, was littered with people watching him, uh, you know, <laughs> um, people from the from the uh, from officialdom, um, and uh, yeah, he basically wandered around with uh, him and a couple of mates, and uh, they walked up to the um, to the Hogsback Bar, and uh, apparently uh, I wasn't there, but Prince Harry ordered uh, that beer. It was called Collaboration, the beer, um, and uh, his mate ordered it as well, but the uh, the um, the server at Hogsback sent his mate away. Not didn't even recognise Prince Harry or his mate. Obviously, sent him away because he had a cracked glass. And it's it's policy, you know, at the camera festivals, they can't pour into a cracked glass. So <laughs> sent him away to, to get a new glass. <laughs> and uh, and Harry was stood there uh, on his Todd uh, sipping the uh, American Red, and uh, he was getting elbowed in the ribs, going, "Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is?" <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty funny, and then they, they uh, and then a couple of people recognised them, and they kind of skulked off into the crowd. But that's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty funny story. Prince Harry did drink that beer, so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, any final thoughts on these two beers, Steve? Or three um, beers, really? Well, I've, of... I've finished them both. Well, yeah, in the, in their various guises, it's now all gone. So um, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed the experiment. I really enjoyed the two different sorts of beers that came out of it, and the the, the, the two blended together as well worked tremendously well. I'm I'm really grateful for Andy to, to Andy for taking the time um, for doing that for us because it, it couldn't have been a lot of fun peeling all that fruit and <laughs> chopping it all up and throwing it in as as, as well. Um, but but yeah, no, it's 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 been fun and they've been really enjoyable. Um, yeah, look forward to, to challenging Andy with something else this Indeed. this year and see what you can come up with. <laughs> yeah. And we look forward to your first beer rolling off the conveyor belt, mate. Yeah, well, oh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me back to uh, to taste that one. I, I look forward to uh, to that show and uh, the first kind of official uh, home, you know, brewed on, on our own premises, uh, Elusive Brewing Beer. Yeah. Right, Steve. Do we have an Instagram of the week, mate? Of course, of course we do. I've got, I've got a. Uh, there, there's a few mentions this week as well because I just couldn't just choose the one this week. So um, first, first mention goes to a regular contributor um, at Sparky Wright, um, who must have been the quickest person to have removed a bottle of Jaipur X from his delivery, <laughs> put it into a glass. And taken a photograph of it last week when they <laughs> arrived, um, and and for a long time that was out in front. Um, that was going to be the the, the prize. This prize. Um, at the weekend though, that was passed by again another regular contributor. Fantastic film. Um, posted a picture of Adnam smoked ruby owl um, with lots of smoke all over it, which I thought was really nice. Um, so we've added real smoke. Uh, so that was running close for winning as well. And until uh, there was a post by, and this is another new winner. Um, so at Guzzler72, um, for a, a, a simply amazing um, kind of negative picture of Adnam's ghost ship. Um, you'll see what I mean. It's up on our feed now. Um, it's linked to in the show notes. But uh, at Guzzler72, you're this week's prize, this prize winner, for which you win nothing but a mention on the Beer of Rock Show. <laughs> 
Which is everything, really. It is. It is. People crave for that mention. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's it for this week. What do we have coming next week, Stephen? Next week we have a another guest um, with us. Uh, someone who's been on, um, much like Andy, has been on a, a previous homebrew special. And also appeared on the last lock-in. Um, Connor Murphy at Like the Murphys is is coming on the show next week, and he's going to be reviewing Tickety Brew Double with us. Cool. Looking forward to that. Right, the Beer O'Clock Show is proud to be supported by Ales by Mail, your premier destination for bottled real ales delivered directly to your door. Visit alesbymail.co.uk and use the code. B O C S one zero for a ten percent discount. Andy, where can people find you online, buddy? Uh, you can find me at Tabamatu. That's T A B A M A T U, uh, or at Elusive Brew. You can find us on Twitter at Beer O'Clock Show. You can find us on Instagram at Beer O'Clock Show. On Untapped at Beer O'Clock Show. Steve, I'm on Untapped at Roku, and I'm on Twitter at Roku. Beer. Until next week, Andy, thank you very much for joining us this week. It's always great to have you on, and you're always welcome. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Cheers. Stevie, che- until cheers, next Andy. week. Thanks for coming on. It's been the highlight of my week. <laughs> <laughs> and mine. Until next week. Cheerio. Cheerio.